Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, it's still gonna be a how-to video. Uh, I'm gonna be walking through all of the things that I use and the things that I take with me to the track uh, that literally fit inside the car. It's what I've been doing for, uh, shoot, almost a decade now as far as packing goes. And um, it's gonna be a little more casual. It's not gonna be as, as cut and edited and polished as most of my videos are. I'm um, just gonna kind of walk with you, talk with you, show you the things that I'm packing in the car and um, be a little bit of a longer video, but hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, I typically have a list that I keep track of. Don't know if that's gonna show up, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna copy and paste this list into the description so that you can copy and paste it into whatever note-taking app or, or paper method you wanna do to, to kind of check things off. Uh, one of the things that I do when I am packing for the track is um, I don't check it off of that list until it's actually in the car. Even though I may have it uh, here, like for example, I got my helmet bags ready. I don't check those off until I've put it into the car and got ready to go. So let's, uh, let's kick it off and you'll have to tell me in the comments if you like this format or not. Uh, one of the first things that I do is I like to get the tow hook out. Um, and the reason that I do this is because I've made the mistake before of starting to load things in. And I keep my uh, aftermarket tow hook in the same spot that the factory one is in. So um, it sucks when you have to load everything and then pull it back out. Uh, but I will grab the factory tow hook. Uh, I also keep a extra little tow hook grill um, and a, a panel removal tool in there so that I don't forget it. So the reason this is extra is that I absolutely hate the way that the 2019 newer SS Camaros look without this piece uh, when you put in a tow hook. So I cut this one so that the, the shaft of the tow hook fits in there. Um, and that way when I take it out and put the factory one back in, uh, there isn't a notch in it. So I'm gonna grab the camera now, we're gonna walk over, we're gonna put this on. All right. Grab this stuff, set the camera down the front of the grill. Another thing that's always fun is that this uh, 2019 tow hook part is a complete pain to remove compared to the 16 to 18 front bumper. So that's always fun. But uh, I do have a video on that if you want to check it out. I think it's a short maybe. Because it doesn't, it doesn't ow doesn't really require a whole whole video. But this thing is such a pain. When you do it enough, you get used to it. So, get the tow hook installed. the notch in it back in. All right, first step. So uh, I usually just put this back in the bag and then just leave it here uh, at home. There's no point in packing it. I'll take this off when I get back and have everything all set. So, ow. Oh, sorry, the uh, 
the exposure is going to be all funky because I'm walking this thing. So, looking at the list, I can now scroll down and check off the tow hook because it's actually on the car now. So um, I have this list kind of split up for like driver, you know, things for the driver, things that are electronic equipment, uh, things for the car, etc. So some optional stuff that you may not have to take at every track. All right, so uh, let's see. Well, I've got my helmet, my primary racing helmet here. I have my spare helmet and my Hans here. So let's go ahead and throw those in. Those I typically put inside the car. Uh, they sit very nicely in the back bucket seat, if you want to call it that. So we'll get those in there. And uh, I do strategically set the driver helmet on the passenger side. And the reason that I do that is one of the first things that you usually have to do when you go to get checked in um, for a track event is you have to have your helmet inspected to make sure that it is a SA 2015 or an SA 2020 um, helmet. So uh, it's easier to just reach over behind me and grab it as opposed to search through some other stuff to find it. We'll get the spare helmet and Hans in behind the driver's side. Now, I already went ahead and did this part, um, but I got the, and I have a, a video on this as well, but I got the GoPro, the headrest mount, and all of the wiring already set up. Uh, I did that a few days ago because uh, I got a new GoPro. So I grabbed the new Hero 13 Black. I'm gonna test out my typical settings for in-car, and I'm also going to try uh, some 4K HDR, and we'll see how that turns out, and see if I like it, or if you guys like it, or if it looks good, or if it looks like total shit, so let's see. All right, driver helmet, Hans device, spare helmet, all set. Can also check off the GoPro, the headrest mount, the GoPro charger, because it's built into the car, and the GoPro microphone adapter and the microphone itself. My microphone is permanently installed. Right there, it's got the little cat tail on it. Um, again, I have a video on in-car AV setup as well that you can check out. Um, I'm going to have links to everything that's in this video in the description. So don't worry about that in case you're wondering where I got something or what I'm using for what. A big majority of the things that I take to the track are, are actually on or in, I should say they're already in a Milwaukee bag. So um, I use this bag specifically for track days and I'll kind of break it down and I'll show you what's in here. But uh, this has a lot of stuff that I might need at the track, such as electrical tape, because you never know. Uh, flashlight, make sure you charge it before you leave. Uh, side cutters some long reach needle nose pliers, scissors, and you know, a little multi screwdriver deal, a uh, swivel Phillips head. Uh, and then inside these zippers, sorry, I'm not, I'm not very good at this whole walking around with the camera thing. This is new to me, so I'm giving it a shot. Um, things like 
work gloves. Uh, my 1LE license plate for all those photo ops. Um, I keep Acrosol and a cloth specifically designed for the Acrosol. And the reason that I do that is that my Stilo helmet, the face mask, the only thing that they uh, recommend for cleaning is Acrosol. Uh, I keep some garbage bags in here. Um, again, just some extra flashlights and uh, a brake caliper hanger because you never know when you might need to do some work at the track, uh, you know, pull a caliper off or whatever it might be, um, or change your pads, right? So um, the Camaro has uh, the, you know, uh, floating or fixed caliper set up. And if your car doesn't have a fixed caliper, it's got a floating caliper, caliper hanging tool, keeps it out of the way. No stress on your brake line, do it. Uh, also these little pads for the seat belt because uh, sometimes that seat belt comes across your, your neck at the wrong angle, doesn't feel good. So put that, keep that in there. Uh, on, in this pocket, I've got my track com microphones. I've got uh, some additional first aid kits. I have a uh, external GPS for like an OBD2 transponder. I have an OBD2 transponder in there. So if you get a code or anything like that, um, you can check what it is. Also, if you use something like Harry's Lap Timer, or any one of the other like track timing apps, the OBD2 device and the external Bluetooth, uh, the external Bluetooth GPS can send that data to that uh, track timer app. So that's why I keep those in there. Even though I have a PDR, um, <clears throat> I still prefer redundancy and backup. So I still run Harry's lap timer. Now on the other side, this side zipped up. Maybe not. It's a lot harder to do with one hand than I was expecting. So, on the other side. So many things. Got a safety siphon. Um, I like to go around the track and just take everybody else's gas. It's way cheaper, way more effective on your wallet. Um, that's all a lie, I'm just kidding. Uh, I use this method to fill up my gas tank. I actually put the gas tank on top of my uh, roof and let gravity feed it uh, into gas, uh, you know, the, the fuel tank. So um, I think you may have been, you may have seen that in some of my other track videos, but uh, there's also a reason I take a moving blanket with me, and that is because I set the gas can on top of the moving blanket. I don't put it directly on the roof. I don't want to scratch the paint or whatever. Uh, so safety siphon. Uh, besides that, we've got other random tools. Uh, 3 8 nut driver. That is actually to take the uh, license plate off and put my 1LE license plate on if I so choose to. Uh, in here, uh, this is a uh, first for me. This is new for this, uh, not even this year. This, this is the final track event for me, unfortunately, for this year. But we've got wheel spacers. So I've uh, bought a set of wheels and tires specifically for track use. So uh, the, the fronts do require some spacers. So I got those there. Let me bring you in a little closer here. Uh, they also have uh, centering rings. Oh, why is that not? Come on. There we go. So we got some centering rings, uh, spare nine volt batteries. Uh, the reason I bring spare nine volt batteries is for two reasons. The track com kit, which lets me talk to a passenger, uh, while I'm in the car, uh, through my helmet uses a nine volt battery, but also the TPMS, uh, learn tool also uses a nine volt battery. So uh, nothing worse than getting there, finding out that you're out of batteries for the things that you wanted. Uh, keep a little stubby hammer in here. The stubby hammer is for brake work. 
uh, it helps knock out the pins. Uh, speaking of the pins, they're in here somewhere. Ah, there they are. We've got uh, Brembo punch tools, a standard punch as well. Um, I also have things like a tread depth gauge that I keep in here. Um, I have an Allen key. I'm sure there's a purpose for this. I can't remember off the top of my head why that specific Allen key is in there. Uh, I have a multi-tool in here just in case uh, all the other tools don't work out. Um, some tissue, my track com is in there. Some uh, wipes uh, just to keep your hands clean. Um, uh, I, have, I carry a bag. Um, so I have, first of all, I have some first aid, right? Just in case some alcohol wipes, band-aids, but then I also have a, uh, just a Ziploc bag that I take all the glove box and loose items that are in the car and I put it in here. That way I know exactly where they are at the end of the day. And I'm not looking for stuff later. Uh, I got this little, geez, I can't get it back in there. <laughs> That's what she said. I uh, got this, you know, little three prong, or I'm sorry, three outlet uh, grounded power cord extension thing for things that we might need to plug in, whether that's phone chargers or whatever it might be. Um, so that's what's in that's what's in the track bag. So I'm gonna put that in there next. Okay, so gone over that. Uh, I'm gonna actually just bring this over and set it aside. Uh, next to the trunk. I'm not putting it in yet because I'll, I'll kind of cover uh, the order that I like to put things in um, in a little bit, in a little while. So I'll have it there. I'll have it ready. And again, I'm not checking anything off that list because it's not in my car yet. So um, one thing I do want to talk about, uh, puke bags. So not for you, the driver, although if, if you do get vertigo or if you get sick easy, might not be a bad idea for you. However, uh, what I like to keep in the glove box are some puke bags. Um, one of my favorite parts of uh, going to the track is uh, taking passengers for a ride with me. And um, you never know how somebody who hasn't done it before is going to handle being tossed around in a car. Uh, especially on a track where maybe they don't really understand what they're about to experience. I like to keep puke bags in there, uh, especially for somebody new. I will just hand it to them. They can hold on to it. Uh, that way <laughs> they don't make a mess in my car. So puke, ba puke bags in the glove box. I will mark that off of the list. All right, so speaking of that list, I'm just gonna, we'll see if we can get this to come in and focus. So again, just kind of covering what we've already put in there. All the things that have a little check mark next to them have been placed in the car. So I'll go to other because I don't really have a category for puke bags, but focus in, we got puke bags there check in the car. Uh, another thing that I keep on that list, track event paperwork. So I typically put uh, all of the paperwork that I have set and ready for a track day in a folder. Uh, that includes um, the technical inspection, uh, any sign offs, um, the, the driver's schedule, uh, if there's passenger um, release forms, I keep the passenger release forms in here as well. Uh, and I typically have this ready well in advance. Uh, for anybody who has seen one of my older videos, um, I also keep my track insurance documents in here. My track insurance people. The best investment you'll make if, if you end up needing it. So uh, I'm gonna put this in the car. I usually keep this with the um, 
right next to my helmet because uh, when they do the inspection they for your helmet they typically want to see uh, your vehicle inspection as well um, so again sorry for all of the weird exposure i've just since i'm moving around so much and, and just trying different camera angles and stuff like that i've just got the exposure set to auto i've got the focus set to auto uh, it's a little different you probably see me looking off camera a little more it's because i'm looking at the little display screen so bear with me or tell me if this is the worst video you've seen etc so uh next i'm gonna actually start packing some of this stuff into the trunk and uh, that's when it gets fun that's when you get to see all of the stuff that i managed to shove in to the to the trunk of the camaro it has a surprisingly large trunk. It's just got a really tiny opening. So uh, stick with me. Okay, I actually mentioned uh, using a moving blanket and putting it on top over here. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that's done. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because one of my uh, five gallon tanks is actually full. Uh, and I'm not gonna transport the uh, tanks full of fuel, it's dangerous. So, uh, and usually these are the first things that I put into the trunk. So I'm gonna show you the method that I use using the, um, whatever it was called, uh, the safety siphon uh, and throw it in the car. So. Still need the capless fuel fill funnel thing. Shove that in there. And then using that said moving blanket. Now this is clean. So I just lay it across there so that it doesn't uh, scratch up the roof. And then take my fuel. Set it up here. I have a little Velcro strap that holds the can open, which is nice. So I take the safety siphon and then I place this into the gas can, or I'm sorry, the gas tank. You'll feel a little bit of resistance past that first door. And then this end, I know, sorry, I'm out of frame here, but I don't care if the star of the show is here. Maybe I will turn the, move this up a bit. So just set it in for now. It's not gonna start yet, but not sure if I'll be able to keep the exposure proper, but all right. So got the gas can up here. I've got the safety siphon routed into the gas tank. Uh, and then I simply place this in here and shake it. And Gravity kind of does its own thing. All right, well, apparently I totally screwed that whole recording thing up because I went to move you in close so that you could see the, the stuff coming in, but apparently I stopped recording, so my bad. Um, while we're getting ready to pack things, I showed you that my track com was in the uh, track bag earlier, and what I'm gonna do ahead of time is set up the track com in the car and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I use the track com to talk to passengers if I'm doing passenger rides. That is exactly how I use it. Just literally can't remember where I just put it. <laughs> Took it out of the bag, can't find it. Far for the course, I guess. Oh, I didn't take it out of the bag. All right, so got my 
track com and cables. So, track com, microphones. So here's what I typically do. I like to open this up. Oh. The nice thing about the Camaro is that the uh, passenger seat has a little uh, back pocket here. So uh, go ahead and put the battery in. Don't keep the battery in for storage. So get the battery in here. And then it has a Velcroed on clip that goes on the back. So I get that on there. And then what I like to do is set up the track com on the back pocket and just hook it on there. Uh, that way I still have control of the volume controls for each headset. And then since I never know who's gonna be in there with me and what type of helmet they're gonna have, what I do is I pick up uh, what's called a student microphone. It's just an earpiece with a microphone that slides up into the helmet and gives you, uh, you know, microphone and, and earpiece. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. But what I like to do is plug that into headset two. And then I route it through the headrest so that it doesn't get tangled up and then it can get plugged in uh, on their, you know, whether it's left side, right side, whatever's more comfortable for them, it can be done. Now for me, uh, I have a Stilo helmet and it has comms built in. So um, do the same thing with this. I just route it over, plug it in and route it over to the driver's side. And on my Stila helmet, the comms are on the right-hand side. I know most, uh, like if you're actually going racing, most comms are on the, the left-hand side of the helmet. Um, but in this case, uh, it's interchangeable. I can, if I needed to, I can go, you know, I can adjust that and change it. But go ahead and plug my IMSA style connector into the track com, and then I will route it over and drop it in between the headrest, just like I did with the other side. So that one is all set. And then I'll put the track com box back in the bag so I don't lose it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I start to load things in here. Um, I went ahead and, and just put a light in here so you can see a little bit easier into the trunk itself. But uh, I start with my two five gallon gas containers um, and I set those way back in there. And the reason I start with those is because, well, they kind of fit great. And uh, I transport empty because it's not really safe uh, to transport full fuel. You know, th this isn't an open trailer. If it was an open trailer, uh, it'd be a little different story. I'd have probably some VP jugs that fit in a designated spot for, for fuel. But, um, you know, right now, uh, my focus is on safety. And really what I do with these is I fill them up uh, at a local gas station close to the track so that I don't have to pay, you know, like $10 a gallon for whatever fuel they have available on site. Um, so I start with those and I actually kind of space them out uh, because I have some uh, wheel chocks that I put in there. Let me see if I can bring this in a little different angle so you can see a little better. Uh, oh. And I bring one of the funnels uh, that's designed for these fuel cans. I typically just toss it back there somewhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be, there's no particular spot for it. However, um, I do bring a jack and jack stands and, you know, speaking of safety, um, have a set of wheel chocks that I will slide back there and get kind of in between them. Uh, keeps them from sliding around, bumping together. Uh, let's see, and then as I do that, <clears throat> I will quite literally, 
you know, start to uh, check off the things that are on this list, like I mentioned to you before. So, you know, five gallon gas tanks, fuel funnel, oops, uh, wheel chocks, really struggling there. Uh, torque wrench, jack stands, two and a half ton jack. I usually leave the, the jack for last um, just because it's a, it, it's one of the first things that I need because when I get to the track, I'm usually uh, putting the wheels and tires or different brake pads on. So I uh, will grab my torque wrench. Uh, this torque wrench, I gotta say, absolutely love it. Um, it's, a, it's a DeWalt and I know you'll probably see a lot of Milwaukee tools, but I promise you I'm not uh, a Milwaukee fanboy, although I do love my Milwaukee tools. This DeWalt torque wrench is extremely long, so it gives plenty of leverage, especially on the Camaro where uh, the wheel torque rating is 140 foot pounds of torque. So I'll take that and I will slide it in towards the back behind some gas tanks. There we go. Get that little funnel in a different spot so it fits a little better. Next, I'll actually put in the track bag that I mentioned earlier. So because I preloaded this thing, I know what's in there. Um, it, it helps me regarding like making sure I have everything that I need. So I get that shoved in there and then I can go through and on my on my checklist, I know that, okay, well, since I already checked the bag earlier, my wheel spacers, centering rings, one LE license plate, three eighths nut driver, those are all in there. I just put my torque wrench in. The safety siphon's in there. Garbage bags. Uh, that is my Milwaukee track bag. Uh, there's a flashlight in there. Uh, there is whiteout in there. And, you know, I didn't show it to you earlier, but I use whiteout to, let me get down here a little, I'm talking to you. So, um, I use whiteout to mark where the wheel and the tire line up. I'll usually put a mark on the tire where the valve stem is, and that helps me track or determine whether or not the tire has been moving on the wheel, hitting, you know, when I'm using curbs and things like that on track. Um, there's, specific like markers and paint that you can use for that. But honestly, whiteout has worked for over a decade for me and it doesn't just fade away. You actually have to like power wash and scrub it off. So uh, it's a really, really good uh, indicator for, for tire movement on your wheel. All right, next what I like to do is I like to pack a lot of the loose items that are on my list into just, a, you know, just an empty box, just something from Amazon or, you know, in this case, uh, I picked up some, some cleaning products from Obsessed Garage. So, um, you know, I have no affiliation with them, but just using the box. Uh, so I'll get this, I'll move this light, I think we're probably, Probably running out of daylight there for, or you know what? Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Should have done that in the first place. So what I'll fill this box with is, uh, like I mentioned, those loose items that I typically keep, such as like uh, ZL1 add-ons, uh, universal pinch weld, if it ever focuses. Come on, come on. There we go. Premium, premium mag pad. Um, so I'll throw these in there. Uh, those help with lifting the vehicle. And then, let's see, we got those. Uh, my, I do like to bring with me uh, impact gun. This is for changing out wheels. Put that in there. Uh, battery powered 3 8 ratchet uh, for any additional power that you might need for stuff. Um, and then I'll take a couple of batteries with me 
uh, make sure that they're you know fully charged before I put them in. Uh, these are the XC 6.0, so I'll have plenty of power for the weekend. Uh, honestly, probably one of them is enough, but I don't want to risk running low on the juice. Put the battery in there for the 3 8 ratchet. Mark those off of my list. You can just set that there. Get in the shot. Maybe, kinda, yeah. It's not gonna stay, of course. It's just gonna make a ton of noise for me. Yeah, whatever. Good enough. Uh, zip ties, uh, you never know when you might have a body panel break. Um, if you're gonna have to repair a body panel anyway, drill some holes, zip tie it together until you get through the weekend. Shove those in there. Um, air gauge, tire pressure gauge. This is actually, I just switched this. I had a long acre. Uh, there was a recent video done by Project Farm where he tested a, a million different air pressure gauges, I don't know, like 20. And uh, this Jayco Digital came out on top overall for like least amount of error and he tested out two of every single one of them. Uh, it's only like 30 bucks. Again, I'll have all of the links in the description for everything that you see. And of course, if you use those links, the Follow My Line channel gets a small commission from it. And honestly, it goes right back into the channel. It helps me continue to make videos like this. So put that in there, make sure got a nice spot for that. Mark that off the list. The other things that uh, I want to make sure that I have is um, some wheel sockets. And you know, these are specific, uh, specifically used for wheels because they have this soft coating on the outside so they don't scratch your wheels. So I'm bringing uh, a 22 millimeter and a 17 millimeter. So the 17 is uh, what my race lugs are, are using. Uh, the 22 is for the OEM lugs. I actually just run the 17s all the time, but I know 22 is common. I'm gonna have some friends there. I'm gonna make sure they're covered too. So we'll go in there as well. Some less common items, uh, baby wipes. <laughs> baby wipes are, are great uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, if, you're, if you're having a real bad weekend, they're great for wiping your ass. But uh, baby wipes are great to cut some of the grease off of your hands if uh, you didn't have time put on some nitro gloves. So I bring a box of nitro gloves with me uh, just to make sure that if we're doing anything with fuel or with oil or coolant, we're covered or, you know, uh, prostate exam or whatever, whatever you're watching or whatever you're doing at the track, got you covered there. Uh, masking tape, uh, in this particular case, it's black. You never know what you might need it for. Let's throw that in there. A uh, few other items that I like to bring. Um, I know we're gonna swap pads out. So uh, brake caliper spreader tool. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, brake caliper. It spreads the pistons open. So that'll go in here as well. Um, this, if you have a supercharged vehicle, any kind that has its own like coolant system, uh, specifically in this case for like the ZL1 or the LT4, uh, if you got a Blackwing, um, CT5V Blackwing, you can use this. I bring this little coolant bleeding kit. I also have a little relay uh, to let you bleed all of the air out of the supercharger coolant system. I got a video on that probably here. I'll put it up here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but that'll go in there. I do bring oil funnel kit and a brake bleeding kit. Uh, and that is just in case we need to purge or bleed some air out of the brake lines. Uh, if for whatever reason you've got overheated fluid and you got air in your lines, we're, we're covered. So. Having a roll of shop towels never hurt. That way we can clean up a mess if we make it. Um, again, we typically get a garage and if we're making a mess, we should, we should clean up the garage 
Uh, the nice thing about Mid-Ohio, and that's where I'm heading and what I'm packing for, is they actually have like an oil dump facility. And in the oil dump facility, they do have some oil absorbing rolls that you can take if you absolutely need it. Speaking of cleanup, brake parts cleaner. Shove that back there. Speaking of all the coolant and fill stuff, I do bring a bottle of coolant with me. Uh, this is the pre-mixed like GM Dexcool 5050 stuff. There we go, shove it in that corner. And then, of course, we need our racing pads. So I'm gonna test these out. These are the uh, gyro disc or gyro disc or gyro disc, however you wanna pronounce it. Uh, these are the GP40s, uh, front and rear. Um, shout out to West Downs for getting me the hookup on those. Uh, and then of course, you never wanna go with just that set of pads, especially if you're at a place that eats up pads. So I got some spare Hawks and some spare pads all over the place. I've got titanium shins in there as well. So we'll mark off the race pads, shims, and spare brake pads for that. Got the brake cleaner in there. Uh, let's see. I would recommend some brake fluid. Uh, I don't have some with me right now. Um, I do have to pick some up before I head out, which is fine. I've got a week to do that. But I would also bring some uh, spare brake fluid. Now that we have a majority of this stuff packed in here, I'm going to bring over my uh, aluminum jack. Uh, so prepare for the loudest sound known to man. So I have a two and a half ton and a three ton aluminum jack. Um, word to the wise, a one and a half ton jack is not safe. Get something bigger. Uh, most people think that um, the rating on the jack is what it's going to support per corner. Uh, it's actually what it's supposed to or designed for how much weight it's supposed to lift. So one and a half ton is very borderline. Uh, just get the two and a half ton, be safer. Uh, get the three, I've got them both, but this goes right in here. And I'll just move some of these brake pads around to get this to fit. Because I want that flat, I don't want it moving around. There we go. And then I can rearrange some of these brake pads in here differently. Not there, aren't moving around. That is in there. And then I will take the jack handle, and place that in here as well, towards the front so it's not moving around, not banging around on stuff. And that means our list is getting pretty small on what we still need to pack. Where did those go? There we go. Two and a half ton jack. So still need to get the jack stands in here, which I will do now. I prefer the three ton flat stop jacks. And yeah, you know what? I'm just placing them in here. I'm not undoing them, I'm not taking them apart. Um, well, I'm making a lot of noise though but don't need to, uh, they have this strategically set up so that, you know, these can kind of fit in here. They kind of zigzag in there or you know, cross, cross each other so that I can still shut the trunk without issue. Boom, four, three ton, flat stop or flat top jack stands in the trunk. 
All right, another item that I like to bring with me, a case of hand tools. And yes, this Craftsman set of hand tools is from 1995. I'm gonna slide this right on top of that box of the other stuff. Um, uh, I mentioned that it's from 95 for one, my dad gave it to me. Two, uh, that mean, that's, that's back when Craftsman still had good tools. So a case of hand tools are in now. And then another thing that I like to do is bring glass cleaner, waterless wash, bug spray, like bug and tar remover and some microfiber towels. And I do that because uh, I'm driving, right? It's uh, like a 13 hour drive. And sometimes the running it through the car wash does not do it justice. And then you got all these bug guts all over your windshield and you know, making sure that your windows, uh, specifically your windshield is clear is crucial, both outside and inside because nothing is worse than sun glare on the inside of the windshield from all of the off gassing that happens from the dash and you know dirt and things like that from driving around with the windows down so grab some of those and literally just toss them in here i'll typically shove these in somewhere where they're not going to get dirty so back here Another option you have is just putting them in a plastic bag and throwing them in there. All right, now we're getting to like the little nitty gritty things on what else can I fit in here. I'm gonna recommend, it doesn't have to be this brand, but I'm telling you, a little folding seat. This is designed for washing a baby in a bathtub, like sit down next to the tub, put your soap and stuff in here, give your baby a bath. This is great for track. You can put some of your tools in these little pockets. It folds up flat so it fits nice and neat inside the trunk, way back there. Doesn't take up a lot of space. And then the other thing that I use because I'm getting to be an old man is uh, just a little like foam cushion pad for my knees, for my back, if I need to lay down and get something for my hip, because you know, I'm old. So that goes in there. This leaves me just enough room to get that folding blanket in here. And by folding blanket, I mean moving blanket. So I can just kind of tuck this in. Probably don't need this light anymore for you. Just get this thing tucked in however we can fit it. Just needs to go in here. In fact, if I need to pull this out for a brief moment and lay this out on top of the, to the jacks, or the jack stands, I should say, we'll do that and then shove this back in place. And outside, I still have some nooks and crannies I can work with in this area here uh, for anything additional that I might need. You know, any last minute, anything you pick up last minute, uh, you can put down into this spot right in here, whether that's some additional tools or whatever you may have forgotten. You still have a little bit of space to just kind of toss some things in. Okay, uh, next thing I want to show you is kind of how I pack. Uh, actually, I, I was gonna show you all my garment bag with all of my uh, race suits and all that stuff. But first, I wanna cover this. This is a, it's basically a Coleman jug. However, it is set up for uh, my race helmet. So it quick connects, I don't know if you can see that, but it quick connects into my Stilo helmet. And I'm telling you, this is probably one of the best things I've done for track days because you get hydration. It is so 
crucial to stay hydrated while out on the track. And this helps tremendously. Sorry, I'm trying to do this all while I'm talking to you and holding the camera. Like I said, this is this setup's new for me. So let me know if you like this format or not. This is a long video me moving around and talking to you format, but I'm gonna go ahead and get you set up inside the car here. I'm gonna show you how I kind of buckle this thing in and, and belt it in. All right, so earlier I showed you this is where I keep like my spare helmet, my Hans device. I'm actually gonna scooch that over for a minute or just put it on top of my other helmet because I'm gonna show you what I do with this. So this is just, uh, like I said, it's a Coleman jug, but it's set up with a quick connect for for my steel helmet. I fill this thing up with ice water and it usually lasts me a day because I take small sips while I'm out on track. But what I do is I belt it in so it doesn't move around. Now, the nice thing about this handle is that it does come loose so that you can route the seat belt through it and buckle it in put that back on. All right, so got that going. Let's, uh, let's pull this out this way because this goes towards the driver's side. But um, for those that aren't aware, the seat belts in most GM products have a anti-retaining uh, feature uh, or anti, I ah, can't read anti ALR something, whatever, doesn't matter. You pull it all the way out and then you slowly release it and you can hear it ratchet back together. And while it's ratcheting, what that does is that will hold it in place and it will not let go until the seatbelt is unbuckled. So what I do is I push this thing in really tight, as tight as it goes give it some slack and then this thing doesn't go anywhere and then what i do is i'll just you know put some ice in here put some water in there um, and then this the hose i just route down alongside and it sits right next to like where my seat controls are and that allows me to grab it and just plug it in to the left side of my helmet when i'm ready to go Got that packed in, got that in spot. And then I will grab the camera from the other side. Because I wanna show you my super awesome garment bag. So this is quite literally just a travel garment bag. You'll see it used for like suits, dresses, things like that. But it's got these zippers in the front. I put my shoes, my gloves in there. You can see it through the little window here. I've got my, uh, my fireproof balaclava, my undershirt, underwear, my socks, uh, and then of course my race suit as well. So all in one convenient package. Again, I'll have links to everything in the description. And then what I do with this is I just Lay it across the back seat. It's pretty slick. Set you down for a minute so I can do that without fumbling everything here. That's pretty much it. The, the last step is just packing my overnight bag. Uh, just a little duffel, um, carry things like, you know, a towel for sweat, a hat for sun protection. And then of course I bring a little uh, insulated cooler bag for, for bringing my lunch and stuff. And that just quite literally sits right there. And my duffel bag goes in the back seat. Uh, if you have somebody coming with you, um, not a problem. You can set that in the back seat as well. Now, you're probably asking, well, this is all great, but 
I have, you know, a set of wheels and tires that I'm bringing. Well, for the first time ever, I mentioned it earlier, so do I. Luckily, I have great friends because they uh, are gonna trailer their vehicle and they're gonna throw my wheels and tires in the bed of their truck. Uh, that's my friend, Matt. He has been on the channel. He's got the black Z01. You've seen it before. If you haven't, check out some of my other videos like this one up here. Um, a lot of cool things on, on the site, whether you like track days or how-to videos, but it's kind of my thing. So uh, I appreciate the time. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you picked up a tip or two on how to pack your car for a track day. Uh, until next time, until the next project, see you then.